Um, so there's not a lot of that uh, as well. And then um, really very, very um, little at the governance and policy level. Um, that's maybe also uh, because of our backgrounds. Um, but really, we are not talking. And I think that's, uh, for uh, the industry, that's a really important uh, implication. So that said, the positives, I do have some things that I think um, um, are maybe not coming out as strongly as I would like them to come out, uh, and some things that I think are missing. So for the individual level, um, it, it mentions mobility, but uh, there's a huge uh, drive now in geography and tourism um, mainstream research that looks at mobilities, and uh, we do not acknowledge enough that the, the consumer we are studying is on the move. Uh, and that has huge implications for uh, how we uh, conceptualize that consumer, but also how we need to study that consumer. So mobile uh, research methodologies are really critical. Um, I have one student who is really struggling right now in terms of collecting data um, that acknowledges that um, on-the-move uh, paradigm. I also think that the uh, non-rational um, consumer understanding and the effective emotional component is a little missing from uh, the wording. I, I think we discussed it, but maybe in the document it's not coming out um, as much. It still has more of that uh, cognitive uh, tone to it. Um, social, as I said, we are, we are missing uh, out on both the research, but I also think there's not a lot of uh, technology development on that social level anymore, and I'm not sure uh, why that is happening. So if we have industry uh, here, and especially technology people here, I would like to uh, hear your opinions on, on why that is uh, the case. Is it the too hard uh, uh, basket, maybe, and how could we tackle it? And then I see uh, a strong ICT bias, which is not surprising because this, this community focuses on information and communication technology. Uh, but I think that um, uh, a lot of um, other technologies are now influencing um, the ICT world. So sensors, uh, but also robotics and uh, drones. Uh, and I don't see enough of that kind of technology really being discussed and integrated in our research. So overall, I think uh, IFIT has been the community that uh, was always ahead of its time. Um, so how can we make sure that this manifesto is ahead of its time? Um, and I'm not sure if we're quite there yet with this version um, to really uh, predict, not just describe what we need to do now, but also um, foresee some of the developments um, in the future. So those are all the, the thoughts that I have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Uli. And uh, I will, let's say, let's say, keep your questions for the, for the next session. So Dan, can you, can you add your, your opinions? OK, thank you very much. Um, um, again, I wasn't a part of the, um, the process. It's in, in, in your throat. Um, so I wasn't a part of the process. And so as an outsider uh, in, in reading in on, on the manifesto, um, some of the comments that, that Uli made I would agree with, some maybe I might not agree with, um, and we can discuss that later. Um, I think that the idea is to challenge and our responsibility and, and the whole idea of, uh, about the exercise is to challenge us to think creatively about the future. And it's, um, if you look at the, at the conference today, there's a lot of, we'll say, very excellent papers that I would argue are making marginal contributions. They're pushing on, on the edge of the envelope and helping us understand and address issues within um, the tourism industry from an IT perspective, but they're really on the edge. Um, they're not pushing us forward in a direction where we can imagine uh, where we should be going. And, and I think that it's our responsibility, both from the industry perspective as well as us at the universities, are actually to push the future and, and, and to show what the future should be not um, and what it could be instead of just simply filling in and making things a little bit more efficient. 
So with that said, um, um, there's a number of w w ways that I would, um, I would argue that we need to uh, consider this. I think one that's very important, I teach at the University of Florida, and um, while there's the discussion, I saw Jamie is taking the lead in terms of MOOCs, the role of, of information technology in shaping um, education is, is fundamental. And, and for us to essentially largely ignore any of that um, it, it is really a missed, uh, missed opportunity for us um, within, uh, within this um, body. Um, and we can, we can discuss that forever. But um, another one I think is more important. Yesterday, when I was doing the panel and the quiz, the, the quiz about big data, um, and I, maybe if you saw that I was shaking my head and maybe disagreeing a little bit with the panelists about the nature of big data, I think um, that big data is quite important for us. And one of the interesting uh, statements was that we need to have a well-defined problem, um, as if we follow the process of, um, um, it's a hypo, um, hypo, hypothesis testing, the logical positivist um, viewpoint of science um, that was created, in, you know, came out of Vienna a thousand years ago, or 500 years ago, sorry, um, you know, a, a while ago. And, um, and that process needs to change. Um, it doesn't get replaced, but it gets enhanced. And the systems that we can create today allow us to understand the world in ways that we've never been able to do before, which challenges the nature of what science is all about, how we go through the process of observation, how we ask questions, and then reformulate those questions. So um, there's been a number of books and a number of articles that have, um, have been written about this topic. We have to address that um, straightforward. We're in the, in the process, and I went to a number of sessions over the last couple of days. Everything is about um, essentially big data. It's our responsibility is to push that and to, and, and, and to tackle that head on um, and try and answer the questions about how science should be created and how we use the new tools of science to frame the way that we see the world. And then the last one, of course, is the role in Uli, um, um, spoke of it a little bit, but this thing called information technology um, has had huge impact on society. There's no paper I would, I, I would think in, um, in, at enter this year, and maybe not last year, that has focused on the role of ICTs in shaping the world around us. It shapes and, and creates and recreates so many, uh, so many issues. Um, um, Hannes brought up and did a, a presentation essentially arguing that he should, we should create new systems that, um, that challenge the dominance of Google and the other private sector. And I asked him the question, why? You know, in what world that we should be doing that? And I was asking, honestly, rhetorically, because I know his, the way that he sees the world. But it's important for us as the industry people and us as as a university to take that on and say, look, we should be investing in, in creating this knowledge and having the capacity to be able to challenge the private sector to actually do things that are, uh, that are appropriate for society today. It's, a, it's important for us to be doing that, not because we can make money, not because it helps the private sector be more efficient, it helps our society become better. But we haven't addressed any of those concerns um, within, within this body. So I, I, to me, I think um, the manifesto is really about setting down those benchmarks to us and the challenges us to all of us and asking how we can use this ICT to, um, to reshape and take responsibility for our future, not just simply respond to the industry itself. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Dan, for these issues that you have put on the table, quite interesting. And then I will give the, the, the floor to Eduardo Santander. Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. I have to admit that I feel a little bit embarrassed, you know, to talk about a paper where I was not involved in, and there's a little bit of, of a strange feeling, you know, to criticize uh, or, you know, to at least um, try to chip in in, in, in a manifesto that um, where I was not aware of. But um, first of all, I would like to congratulate those out the authors of the manifesto. I think it's uh, for me, and not being a researcher again, I would like to underline I'm not a researcher. I'm 
I'm a pure marketeer, so I'm completely only on the other side, more on, not on the theoretical part, but on the practice side. Uh, the paper is, is a very good begin, uh, in my opinion, um, but coming from Brussels and, and having to deal uh, with some real issues, real issues meaning with uh, um, policy makers, with the governmental agencies, with governments, with uh, officers. I'm lacking here, or I'm, what I see is the lack or the missing of a bridge between the research world in tourism and what I, you have been calling in the layer um, three, four, and five, uh, the industry, the enterprise, and the government and policy makers. There is a big gap there. And why I'm telling you that is that, uh, and I would like you know, to, to quote our, um, um, our previous uh, keynote speaker, Jean-Luc Bonin, who, who has really uh, reflected the, the, the reality of tourism in, in, on, the, uh, on the field, uh, where you see, um, that people in the DMOs, in the regional, the local DMOs, they don't have nothing to do if they, and they admit it, that the, the former um, way to work, the, the, the role that they have been assigned to, it doesn't make much sense to do it that way. But, I mean, they have a contract, they have a, uh, they are civil servants, uh, whatever, they have to, this kind of job, but they won't change until someone from the top will tell them, you have to do it in another way. And this is bad. Because what is happening, it's coming, you know, from the bottom, bottom up. And I've learned in my years in, in Brussels that uh, things move when they come top down. Sadly, say it is, it is how it is. And this is the, w the way tourism is being approached in, in, uh, by our policymakers. Tourism became important in the last years. It's almost 10% of European GDP. It's even more important in Switzerland. Um, but it is a very fragmented industry. And there is, and what I'm reading from, from the paper, there is still a fragmenting research as well, somehow. So what the uh, researcher says has nothing to do with the other one, even if they're talking about the same topic. So we need to find some glue, if I can call it that way, uh, and to, to build the bridge. And um, the only way to, to have the governments and the policymakers taking care of or building this bridge, or to give funding, but the tourism industry is completely public funded, but, funded by 86% 80, of, of, of it's coming from the public money. Because, you know, enterprises and companies and uh, we'll have uh, uh, Bravo Fly's opinion today, but uh, if they need evidence-based data, evidence-based research, they will pay for it. And there will be some consultants doing that and so. But I think we have a huge opportunity to build this bridge between the academia and the industry, which is which in, in my opinion is very missing here in this paper, and I think we, we, it's a good base for, for a, a broader discussion. And I'm happy you know, to contribute what we have done in the, the European Commission in the last four years, is not do anything that it's not evidence-based. And if we are doing marketing activities in China, it doesn't make much sense to invest millions in China if we don't solve, for instance, the visa issue, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, problems of China, or to understand better the Chinese traveler Chinese traveler doesn't necessarily need so many things that we are selling to them or we are presenting or offering to them as a service. So try to really apply the research and apply, or let's put the issue, maybe what we should need is more applied science in, in that case with a, a target which is plain to the policy makers and it's highly greeted and probably uh, even financed by them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you Hello. for your contribution, and then uh, the word the now pass to Fabio Cannavale. Uh, I mean, I'm not an academic, I uh, know mm. not uh, a lot about the manifesto. I just give some consideration about what is written in the paper, and I think is, is the most uh, relevant uh, uh, trends that uh, we have to share, uh, to, we, we have to face in the future. One uh, is uh, the mobile. What does the implication of mobile that, uh, of course, is written there? Uh, mobile, uh, in our opinion, and we see every day, is going to, to change completely the, the industry of travel. Because uh, mobile uh, means speed, means uh, always on, means proximity, means uh, last second decision. As uh, was the presentation before from the uh, Office of Acquitance, uh, it, it, it's totally true. So the way people is going to travel, will become totally different, is becoming totally different, 
because of mobile. And so it's really changing totally the paradigm that before people was booking uh, in a travel agency after in uh, maybe online on uh, online travel agency or or um, or airlines or whatever the future will totally change because uh, the mobile will offer much more to everyone in each single moment and so will be a lot of occasion to take and really the way of travel will be distributed will, is changing to totally by the mobile and uh, this is uh, everyone has to, to, to look at that otherwise uh, uh, you're out. The second uh, point that I think is very important that uh, it's interesting to have a uh, representative of the, let's say, European community is uh, it's sharing. Sharing is the second, uh, is I think the most uh, important uh, uh, innovation in the travel in, this, in the last years. If you consider it the largest company, uh, the largest startup are Uber, Airbnb, uh, blah, blah, car. What is the, the common of that is sharing. Sharing, I think, is a, is a big opportunity because sharing it means giving more resources available for travelers things that normally were not used for travelers. Of course, it's also a threat for all the incumbent, because if you have a hotel room, so you have a taxi, you have whatever, it's a threat. But what I see that uh, it's, at the end is a, is a big opportunity for the market, because sharing will be more efficient use of the resources. Uh, what we see now, that uh, legislation is much uh, late versus the market, everywhere, at least in Europe. So there is a new kind of services that normally are forbidden. For example, Airbnb in Italy is forbidden, in theory, <laughs> and, and in many countries. Uh, Uber, uh, all the taxi drivers are today attaching Uber, and they didn't understood that the real risk is not Uber, but is car sharing by sharing. Because in a few years, there are already some meta on this. Uh, everyone will always use uh, everywhere sharing with one card for all Europe, for all the sharing. And this is something that will be very close, I think, in two, three years. And, and uh, it's not even new, but it's, it's, it's something different. So sharing, it's the second, I think, big trend in the industry that will really is changing totally the rule of the game. And it's something that everyone has to, to, to face. The third point, or whatever is always asked, is about the concentration and the monopolies of booking or, or of these things. I'm positive on that, also for my own experience. We founded a company from zero with no money, and today we are the fourth largest, fourth largest group in uh, online travel uh, in, in Europe. Uh, there is a lot of example of big company growing with innovation. If you consider Google is only 16 years old, Facebook is 16 years old, uh, uh, Airbnb is seven, uh, and Uber is three or four. So the point is, uh, uh, it's something that is totally different of what we had used uh, before, because we are talking about Google as the largest monopolist in the world, is a company that uh, is 16 years old, and maybe if they innovate and they are on the market, they can uh, survive. Otherwise, uh, like it was Nokia, uh, that was a uh, uh, problem of monopoly of telephones like uh, six years ago, Today, nobody thinks that Nokia could be a danger for anyone. So the point, uh, my point is, uh, as the market has no barrier, as there is possibility for new company to come, as it is, because we see every day something new arriving, I don't think there is a big risk of monopoly, because uh, take the case of booking, that is the more discussed on that. Uh, there is a pressure to have different models, and uh, uh, if they have too high margin, uh, at the end there is someone that can uh, cut that uh, and uh, there is things uh, happening around the world to offer to the hotels alternative system. And so I think at the end on that market, if uh, there is innovation and there is possibility for everyone to create a new company, the market on that can self-regulate it. And, and so on that, I think in an industry so dynamic, the innovation is so important that, yes, there is concentration, but even with concentration, we face in the last years a very big new company arriving. Capital is available for good ideas, is the example of MBA and Uber. And so on that, I think, is not a big problem. 
more the, the things is legislation is to be not late, but in line with all the innovation. Thank you, Fabio, for these additional points, issues that you have put on the table. And now I think that uh, there is a space for the audience. <laughs> I see already some, some hands that are raised. So questions and also comments uh, are, let's say, uh, let's take some of these uh, questions and comments and then uh, let's give uh, the, 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 uh, the possibility to the speakers uh, to, to reply to your questions. Um, every one of you mentioned that there is a need to bridge the scientific community to the industry. Um, and I think probably it's a, it's a question of the motivation. So if you look at within the scientific commu community, we don't earn money by publishing. Um, we earn reputation uh, as we are uh, cited by someone else. So I think that very often this doesn't come along with the, with the need to solve the problem within the industry. Okay? Very often we it seems, and uh, probably I don't make friends with, with this comment, that we are publishing because we wanted to get cited and not because we want to shape the future. We are very often analyzing and measuring what happens and how things are, which are already existing, but we are very often lacking in being creative and in being shaping the future. I actually didn't raise my hand, but <laughs> uh, um, yeah, now I'm raising my hand. Uh, I, I, I see this actually um, in a different way. Uh, you mentioned about you know the need for applied research, and I think as academ uh, some members of the academia, um, the it's not really about um, answering uh, short-term issues. Some uh, some of us actually try to, to uh, do research that probably would not uh, have um, direct impact on the industry right now or in, the, in you know, a year and, and, uh, and so on. Uh, but, you know, with, with academic research, some of us are trying to do more, more of a long-term perspective. So that's, that's why some, some of the researchers might not um, be motivated to do more applied research um, and work together with the industry, but more looking into, you know, theoretical, uh, more theoretical perspective so that um, it would be impactful in the long term. Um, I, I mean, that's probably one way to see this, but um, I agree that applied research is important. Um, I agree with Dan. Uh, let, let me put it in a way which is clear for everyone. Most of the times I hear uh, asking for more applied research, I directly translate that one into free consultancy because this is what many of the industry representatives are asking for. Now this is a different job. Hmm? Uh, we can do, but it's a different job. Uh, I think that what we probably uh, would need is an intermediate layer between the research, researchers, academia, and so on, and the industry. And there's someone picking up from the research what is, can be uh, used more uh, uh, immediately more frequently and so on, and translate this one into something that may be immediately useful for academia. The problem is, whose job is this one? Uh, for how academia is organized today is not the job of uh, a professor or a researcher and so on. Uh, it's a job probably more for a consultant or something in between. But I think we should make clear this point because applied research is a strange term. What does it mean? Uh, and what, what is the purpose? The, in my opinion, applied research is research I do not for a pure theoretical basis, but can have some practical application, but can have, not necessarily it has today. Okay, okay we have a, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's say I have another question and then we can, uh, we, yeah. 
Well, it's not a question, it's, a, it's an statement. Um, um, let me tell you something. I don't know what is applied research, but it's definitely that we have to do. I am working in the applied university, and we don't have PhD, we don't have master's students, then that's why we publish so few papers every year, because we have not students that can help us to write a paper. Then in, in average we publish one, in the best year, two papers in enter. But we have to do applied, applied research, because our findings depend almost on that. And another thing that I will tell you as a statistician is that it's not because it is an applied problem that it is easy to solve. Sometimes the applied problems are the most difficult problems to solve because you have not a way out. You have a client in front and he's asking a very, very precise question. And you cannot do when we do another kind of research and say, well, I just changed the hypothesis because he's looking on this very thing and he's paying for you. Then what I see in the 15 years that I was working in Enter, I have never come back home and say, wow, this research, this statistical method, I didn't know. I will work on that. I think that we are working in the same statistical method. The last one was uh, structural, uh, structural um, equations. But um, I think that we have to improve uh, the level of a statistical method. Uh, it's just it's such a suggestion, eh? you take it or not. But uh, I think that this methodology part is, is, is not really be support as it have to be. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. So now we can go back to the panelists. I want also to invite you to, to be critical, more critical to the structure of this manifesto. So if you really see that there is something which is missing of this structure, is not completely covering aspects that are important, please, let's say, put forward this, uh, these issues. Please, Dan, you want to? So, um, about the supply, because then we can move on. Um, the, the, from, from my perspective, I have no problems with, with applied research. And just like Rodolfo said, for me to work and um, for the last 35 years, I've tried to work as closely with the industry as I possibly can so that I can get to understand the, 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 the challenges and the questions that, that they ask, and hopefully we can tr try and help them understand them um, and, and then answer them, right? On the other hand, the manifesto and where what we're supposed to be doing is trying to imagine the future and then us as a, as a group trying to create that future. And one of the, um, uh, Fabio brought up about the sharing society. The impact of, of, of data sharing and knowledge sharing on our society is huge. If you think about, um, if we're just simply consultants and trying to work within the industry, um, we would never ask the question, how, what, what impact Google has, has had on society? Or what impact something like uh, uh, or um, TripAdvisor, how they've reshaped the industry. We, because we would be at the very small level thinking about how to improve it, how to analyze the data to say how we can actually make it even better. Not asking the fundamental question is, has um, creating a sharing society fundamentally sh shaped or reshaped travel itself and how society responds to it? And in fact, right now, there's a number of books that actually challenge us as a society to, to re-understand and, 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 and how um, actually basic economies work. And the new sharing society um, is really forcing us um, to reimagine what that is. That's not a consultancy. That's us as a responsibility in, in our field to be able to reimagine that. Or the work that Lorenzo does with his graduate students in using uh, communication as a foundation. That's not a consultancy project. That's actually a reimagining of, of how we can use that kind of um, uh, technology and understanding to be able to reshape it. So I, I, it's, it's, a, it's very important um, for us to address that problem. But I think that that's an irrelevant problem for us in terms of, of thinking about what the future is. That's not the, that's not the issue today. The issue t for us in this manifesto is to say, where should we be? How do we um, contribute in a meaningful way um, to imagining what, what the future should be? 
in many different ways. Yeah, I, I just I wanted to, to put some other issues. Uh, from a computer science perspective, because uh, say here is missing, <laughs> say the yeah. academic. Now, uh, the critic that I typically do to, uh, to say to the res to research which is presented in this venue is that uh, we spend too much time in analyzing what we have, uh, so and understanding what what is happening, uh, and less time uh, to inventing uh, new solutions. That they, and that's something that they, in some sense you are you are mentioning. So the approach of computer scientists, which is engineering, is building something. Let's say building something which has not been shown before that was useful and was effective, and then showing that this could uh, could change could change something could 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 produce some benefits uh, to the user to the customers. So, so I think uh, uh, in this sense, we are in line. So computer science and what you are saying is in line with this idea of uh, shaping the future. Please, Eduardo. Uh, I would like you know, to, to follow up on the fundamental questions. And um, I mentioned before that I'm not a researcher, but I did some research in previous year. I wrote my PhD in something very different, uh, nothing compared to e tourism, but it was in sport medicine. And, and it was, uh, I wrote my PhD on high altitude sickness. And I wrote that uh, thinking because that, back that day, in that period, you know, a friend, a good friend of my dad in the Himalaya making some um, climbing stuff. So my, my feeling was that I, you know, I have to, to do something, you know, to find solutions and to make, you know, to apply something to, uh, of my research of my time. And if we go back to, to the fundamentals of science and, and Aristotle and empiric and analytic uh, method, I think it has, of course, the, the mean is not just to create knowledge for just for the sake of have knowledge in a drawer, but to apply that knowledge. And again, just moving that you know, to, the, to the present situation where we are, I think we have a responsibility and the research, and, and of course I understand Professor Baggio saying, you know, it, it, maybe it's not a role of the academia, it should be the role maybe of the industry. But you know, bridges, bridges and I always say like, Tunnels, you cannot build a tunnel or a bridge just from one side. You have to begin always from both sides. Can I go back so we can debate a little bit? But um, you know, just think in, in science, um, um, Hubble in, in space, by creating Hubble, it allowed us to ask questions that we never imagined or, and, and to be able to answer um, questions that we never ever thought that we could ever do it. By creating the technology um, to be able to collect data about things that we could never see, allow us to reshape it and say, you know what, I never ever ever, ever understood those fundamentals of, the, of, of physics um, to be able to reshape it. And the, back to Fabio in terms of the sharing society, by having data and, and the growth in, in terms of so many ways and the new technologies that are coming out in terms of dealing with big data and, and understanding how sharing and mobility really reshapes the way of the world, we can ask Questions that we've never, we never thought about before, in terms of understanding, and I think that's the, one of the roles for organizations like this is, is to be able to create those tools. As, um, uh, um, as Francesco said, we need to invent these new tools so that we can actually then ask new questions that we never thought that we, we did, and we're still stuck in. I would argue from yesterday's panel. We're stuck in this, uh, we need to understand the problem, we need to ask the questions, we need to go test the hypotheses, which I do a lot of. But when you start playing and using these new tools, it allows you to explore new questions that you never even thought about mm -hmm. before, which I would argue substantially is going to change the way that we do research, science, and how we frame um, um, the, our roles in society. Can I follow yeah. up on this? Yeah. Because I also uh, heard from, from Fabio um, that we really need to think about systems and dynamics and um, um, I think market dynamics has really drifted off a little bit. I don't see it represented enough. We have network dynamics in there but um, I think that's a little different because that's uh, uh, more looking at organizations and how they collaborate maybe. But. Um, so that uh, going back to Miriam then means we have to think about simulations, we have to think about process views, we have to think about longitudinal um, data that uh, I don't think we are really engaging with. But then we also need the industry to supply, supply some of the data. Yeah. I think that's, um, that's what happens with Google. Google says, here's our data, you play with it, you innovate. Um, 
And I don't see that happening in tourism enough where tourism companies have competitions maybe for scientists to say, here's the data, we have n no idea what to uh, really make of it, play around and tell us what, what, we, what questions to ask about this data. Do you want to add something? Otherwise I will go for another, let's say, okay. No, I, I, I wanted to stress this point because many times you are asked to run research on certain problems and then when you start, you don't know with what you should try to research because no one is willing to help in giving data or something like that. I mean, that's a typical situation in which you, you end up many times. So this is part of the bridge uh, you were talking. I fully agree. But we need to understand both. I mean, I, I think we, we, we do a lot in trying to understand what are the, the, the needs and what are the ideas and the attitudes of the industry. I would like to see sometimes a bit more on the other side. Because I only get requests, but never, uh, as I say, um, proposal of real and real collaboration, not just words, but real collaboration means, for example, give me the data if you want I analyze them, because I cannot analyze just based on uh, general ideas and so on. So it would be wonderful to have uh, a situation like that one. Uh, I've never seen in tourism. Can I answer that one? Uh, I think that uh, th this is a, a real role for IFIT. Uh, I think that uh, this is a space uh, that IFIT has to take, not to, 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 say, to, to facilitate uh, this type of connection and uh, and then and, and ensure that the role of, uh, let's say, connector between this, uh, these two worlds, uh, because of maybe for the single uh, researchers it could be more difficult to have the credibility to, to, to offer these solutions. Uh, do we have some more yes, questions? Be going, before going back, okay. Let a, a very short. I think that it's a problem of, uh, of research agenda. For instance, in our institute, it's Roland Schegg, who is working with OTAs since 2002, and he's working and working and working, and he has this agenda. And we know that, we, and this is the data that we collect ourselves, but we have had so far 12. And I have another example. When we begin here in 2002, we were studying the adoption of internet by, by the community, and we had... Uh, uh, robots, uh, robots in order to go to go and look how many adopted and domain name. This robot during 12 years and repeat and repeat and make the forecast and say if the forecast was good and analyzing the kind of innovation. This is not a problem that you ask to the industry. Just give you the data. If if we, probably we can build an agenda and follow up during years and years. Another example is the adoption of Web 2.0 to or 2.0. Also, we have a robot. Every three years, we pass the robot, and in this way, we get the data. Nobody gives us the data. We collected this, but we have, a we have a line that we have to keep. But this is not because we are good. It's because we have in the Fajo Schule. We are there, and we have to produce uh, applied research. Okay. We cannot change our agenda okay. every year. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Uh, I think that... Uh, uh, sorry. Would, Miriam, would you, you are in a very to... special situation. Uh, if you want to do research... I should be the moderator. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to not, do not research you. on that, you can do. I but if you want to I, do research on other I topics, I, you need data. I don't want to be, let's say... Yeah. That's a, I, I, want, I wanted thing. to answer uh, to Professor um, Baggio on the... In fact, we have a huge momentum here. In time of economic constraints, you see that innovation is getting through. Why? I mean, you see, and I see it on a daily basis in Brussels, governments are asking you know, for KPIs for every single thing. You know, if we spend one euro or one franc or whatever, we want to see the value of that. And there is a necessity, that there is a need for them you know, to, to have evidence-based data that they say, for instance, our tourism budgets are well spent, which are not. I can tell you now that uh, tourism budgets are not well spent, Europe-wide. Um, so I think, and uh, what I wanted to say, of course, that uh, there has to be, but someone has to ring the bell, and someone has to knock the door and say, okay, and, and there has to be a little bit, again, of re individual and collective responsibility to make things happen. From nothing comes nothing. Uh, just a comment. I think we kind of drifted away from the initial purpose of this uh, uh, session. I think we, those questions are not debatable here. I mean, the fundamental role of research and how we connect with, with the industry, these kind of questions can be debated forever. It never ends. But I think going back to what, what, what was saying, I said at the beginning, 
it's more about you know the research agenda for for for, for IT and tourism. You know, the how what are the questions we need to be asking? What are the tools we, we need to de be developing in order to help this process? So we need to really focus on those those kind of uh, discussion and debates instead of you know philosophically what 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 it means by being a researcher. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Well, uh, uh, I will just follow up on, in his uh, thinking. And as a practical, uh, I guess, a contribution perhaps to this manifesto and based on what has been discussed today here, I think that perhaps we are missing what is the fundamental question in each of the sections. And then another contribution should be, and this knowledge, how can be applied or how the industry or the policy makers or others can take advantage of this knowledge. Because I think there are two, let's say, parts of the same coin. One is, where, how do we build or how do we create this knowledge, the fundamental questions that should be developed for each of the sections, because at least we have now a structure. We may like it better or not, but we have discuss a lot on this, this structure, so it was not the one that I proposed, but I can follow it. It's, it's not a problem for me. But what perhaps we are missing is, from one side, this is the knowledge, and then for the other side, how the industry can advantage this knowledge, how can be put in action. And, and perhaps we can then enhance the document that way. But this is just okay. as a practical way Thank to go. Thank Yeah, there. Yeah. Can you tell your name uh, before? Yes, my name is uh, Christian Morrison, University of Houston. Um, I totally agree with the idea of developing better research. And when I mean better research, I, I want to say better basic research. I think we can do a much better job in developing the basic research. And yes, I agree that it may stay in the drawer for a while. But if it's valuable enough, somebody will come and engineer something from that valuable research that was, that was done. The other point is, if we do this kind of research and it's really good, the industry will come to us, so we don't need to go and ask for the data. They'll come and give us the data because mm -hmm. they want something valuable from us. So, uh, so my focus should be, I would say, on value, on, on the value of the basic research. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, there is a there is another question over there. Thank you. My name is uh, Dr. Ray Mutinda. Now, my concern in this is on the area of uh, governance. And I note the uh, omission of that on that specific area as far as uh, research in IT and the travel and tourism is concerned. In consideration of the, the digital divide, where we have destinations that I can refer to as being in transition. Destinations where the IT component is not so well developed. I would wish to see research that is going to be focusing on how do these destinations transit between, I mean, from a purely system that is IT uh, not reliant to a level where we'll be able to integrate information and uh, communication technology into the way of doing tourism within that destination in transition. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think that we do not have much more time, so I think that uh, I will leave uh, to the to the panelists. Let's say just one second, uh, uh, let's say statement uh, that uh, would uh, let's say summarize or stress uh, the most important things that you see as uh, the future activity uh, based on this manifesto. So, so you can, uh, Fabio, maybe you can start, and then we can move in this direction. Yeah. I think that uh, it would uh, it could be, I mean, at least for me as a representative of the industry, uh, I think there should be more collaboration between the industry and the, uh, let's say, university or research based on uh, concrete things. So we, as uh, we like to share our data, so we have no problem on that, and. Uh, uh, the fact that we like to, uh, we have, a, as an industry, always a very pragmatic approach. And sometimes it's difficult to confront uh, with some more uh, theoretical approach. And so maybe probably uh, a, 
I mean, a common ground could be found in, in some specific project where uh, we can learn from, uh, for example, new experience and new technology open to everyone. Okay, thanks. Eduardo? Uh, yeah, we would like, we'd like to, to underline uh, Fabio's words, uh, adding a quote from Nelson Mandela, who, who, who made the impossible possible, and he's saying, well, because we have these two pieces here, the industry and the research, and say, it says, um, alone you will be very fast, but together you will go far. And so with that words, I would like to, to say that uh, it's, it's not Yahoo is doing what, so let's do it together. Okay, thanks, sir. So I think my major conclusion is that we are missing a, maybe a technological layer where uh, we need to think about maybe more of the, the building layer, I don't know, um, that uh, um, thinks about uh, what, uh, what could be done. Uh, and then also maybe following up from Orkene uh, to articulate some major questions. So instead of saying uh, here, um, topics, but really formulate those more in terms of um, big issue questions. Thank you. And not to be last, um, I, um, I, okay, thank you. Um, I'm um, eternally optimistic uh, about the future of IT and tourism. And I, I honestly believe that um, with the new tools, with the partnership with industry, the changing nature of society itself, I can't imagine a better time to be a graduate student or a, uh, someone beginning their life in, um, uh, within the tourism industry. On the, w with that said, the challenges are really quite substantial. We have to get better. Our research that we do in the papers, there are some really excellent papers that I saw over the, the last couple of days, really excellent. But there's a lot of really bad papers. Reformulated, <laughs> that they need to be thought rethought, and we need a challenge for me, our, our PhD students, the industry, to, to ask questions in a different way and try and answer them in a much better way. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very much optimistic, but with that, we take the challenges that we have to take in order to, um, in order to, to address these challenges, and, and they're, they're quite substantial. But it takes the discipline and the, and the, the quality of leadership from Lorenzo with, uh, with IFID and for Hannes and, and the people here um, to move it forward. You guys, we need you to be the very best to be able to um, uh, enable this industry to grow like it should. So thank you very much and have a good lunch. Okay, I, I would like to say take the opportunity to thanks again to the panelists and to thank the audience and also I will follow this, uh, this indication uh, uh, coming from Dan, because there will be a next JIT workshop on methodological issues, and I think this is a really a the sign that we need such a discussion. Thank you again, and then we, we go for lunch. Thank you.